All right, here's another balancing equation problem. So for instance, maybe we had something like this, yeah, CaSO4, and it was reacting with something like uh, NH4, NO3. And on the other side, we have, uh, golly gosh, maybe something like Ca, NO3, 2, plus uh, NH4, 2, SO4. And we try and balance an equation like this. And at first sight, this seems like a real pain in the neck, right? So, I mean, if you look at oxygen, there's oxygens here, there's oxygens here, there's oxygens here, there's oxygens here. It's going to be really hard to figure out what the coefficients are. If you look at nitrogens, you got them here, you got them here, and you got them here, and you got them here on the other side. And the pro tip to balancing equations like this is to notice that it's actually ionic. And so you've got calcium sulfate. So it's actually calcium and sulfate here. And on the other side, you've got ammonium nitrate. So you've got ammonium, so you've got to know your polyatomic ion still, so ammonium, and you've got nitrate. And on the other side, right, you've got calcium and you've got nitrate, so there's calcium and there's nitrate. Now remember, when you've got more than one polyatomic ion, you put them in parentheses and put the subscript down below. And on the other side, you've got ammonium sulfate. So you've got ammonium, again, parentheses, and a two means that there's two of them, and uh, there's one sulfate ion, so it looks something like so, and if you look at this, right, and you try and balance this, you can say there's one calcium, there's one sulfate, there's one ammonium, there's one nitrate on the left, and on the other side, there's one and two and two and one. So you can see that we've got two nitrates and you got two ammoniums on the right. We've only got one on the left. So it's a lot easier to keep track of this, not as separate atoms, but as polyatomic ions. So of course, if you need two ammoniums, what you can do is you can change this coefficient here to a two, and it gives you two ammoniums. And actually, since there's now a two in front of the whole thing, there's two nitrates. So actually, this is balanced at this point here. Now, if we went ahead and we kept track of oxygen and nitrogen and hydrogen, we'd probably go crazy, but by looking at the polyatomic ions, it's much, much easier to keep track of. All right, you ready for a couple of practice ones? All right, so here's one to try. So um, this is the chemical reaction that airbags use. So uh, sodium nitrite uh, reacts and forms sodium and nitrogen. And can you balance that using the lowest set of whole number coefficients? And if you can do that, then you can move on to this one here. So C6H12 plus O2 goes to, sorry, that two's not very good, goes to CO2 plus H2O. And there's one underneath here, C6H12O6 plus oxygen goes to CO2 and water. And so the top reaction here is actually the airbag reaction in cars. So uh, cars make nitrogen gas there when there's a collision and in a fraction of a second they inflate a bag full of several liters of nitrogen. This reaction here and this reaction here, um, this is very similar in chemical composition to fat. So if you actually are looking at your body and the way it burns fat, then this reaction here is quite similar to fat. It's fat is not that simple, actually. And this reaction here is quite similar to the chemical reaction for carbohydrate burn. In fact, this is the formula for glucose. So balance these equations, and we'll talk about how this equation here and this equation here gives us an interesting insight to whether we're burning fat or carb. All right, so pause the video, balance Bouncing up and let's compare notes. All right, I'm back. So this one here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, balance it out kind of in my head. So I'm going to look at this one here and I'm going to give you a tip here actually. There's three nitrogens here and there's two over here. And uh, so it's kind of be a pain to get the same number on each side because you got an odd number and you got an even number here. But you can notice that six is the smallest number that these both divide equally into. And so three goes into six twice, two goes into six three times. So that's gonna be a hint actually that we can have six nitrogens on each side and we can get that by putting a two here or a three here. So that's kind of hard to balance by trial and error, I would say. Although you can, you might just want to look for those common kind of uh, factors between the two. And of course, now there's two sodiums on the left, so to get two on the right, we put a two there. So that is the first chemical reaction. If we look at the second one, we can see there's six carbons on the left, and we need to have six on the right, so we can just actually put a coefficient of six in front of the CO2. There's 12 hydrogens on the left, and the only place hydrogen shows up on the right is in water, and it comes two at a time. So if there's 12 on the left, we need 12 on the right, so we put a six there. And uh, now the oxygens are kind of tricky because you got uh, O2 and CO2, and you got six of them, so that makes 12. And you got one O in water, six of them makes six, and 12 and six are 18. Oxygen comes in a pair, so you need nine pairs to have a total of 18. So that's the balanced equation. 
And the last one here is actually kind of tough. It's the same thing with the carbon. There's six carbons on the left. We want six on the right, so we put a coefficient of six here. There are 12 hydrogens on the left. We need 12 on the right. So if water has two apiece, then same story as before. We need six of them. The oxygens, though, are really tricky here, I would say. And we've got six times two, that's 12 there. Six times one is six there, and that gives us 18 oxygens on the right. Now, if you look at this molecule here, it already has six in. So if you've got 18 on the right, and you've got six here, if you subtract six away from 18, you get 12. So we've got to get 12 oxygens from O2. Since it comes in a pair, we know six O2s gives us 12. And this is a balanced chemical equation. Now, one of the really cool things about this is this actually allows you to tell whether your body is burning sugars, carbohydrates, or if it's burning fats. And the way you can tell is if you're burning sugars, and if you're actually burning glucose, this would be precise, for every six oxygens you breathe in, you breathe out six CO2s. But if you're burning fats, right, which uh, don't have any oxygen in there, you have to, for every nine oxygens you breathe in, you breathe out six CO2s. So if you monitor the amount of oxygen you breathe in versus the amount of CO2 you breathe out, that ratio will tell you if you're burning maybe carbohydrate versus maybe fat. So that ratio there, it's exactly one to one in this case, whereas here it's a three to two or nine to six if you prefer. So that's pretty cool, huh?